Wiltshire, a landlocked county in southwest England full of valleys and fields. Lots and lots of fields. But in amongst these loads of fields are some very strange shapes that stick out as unnatural objects in an otherwise flowing natural landscape. What could they be? Long before the city of Salisbury was founded, Wiltshire appears to have acted as a magnet for prehistoric activity and dotted all around the county is an abundance of ancient sites. This video looks at three very different prehistoric sites located towards the north of the county. Think of prehistoric Britain and the first thing that comes to mind would usually be Stonehenge, a mysterious collection of large stones assembled in a circle which even today still holds secrets as to how and why they were built. With henges generally considered to be astronomical observatories or places for rituals and worship, another common prehistoric construction is the barrow. Just looking at a satellite image around the village of Avesbury, you can see how many of these strange shapes can be seen on the ground, with many of them now appearing as little more than crop circles. These were places where the dead were laid to rest, and one of the most well known from this area is the West Kennet Long Barrow. Driving along the A4 road, you'll know when you're close to West Kennet Long Barrow, as a strange hill will soon appear at the side of the road, but more on that later. Pulling into the lay-by, there is then a path to follow up a hill bordered by cornfields. On the top of this gentle hill is a number of standing stones known as sarsen stones, and these mark the entrance to one of the largest and most impressive Neolithic graves in Britain. These stones are off-centre to the main entrance of the actual barrow itself, as the chambers ceased to be used around the 3rd millennium BC, and earth was used to block the entrance. The barrow is constructed with a total of five chambers, two on each side of the main passageway, and a final chamber that is high enough so you can stand upright within it. Following excavations in the 19th and 20th centuries, the chambers have been opened up once more, and human remains as well as artefacts such as pottery and a dagger were found inside. Radiocarbon dating has revealed that the oldest individuals within the chambers died around 3670 BC, and the most recent burials took place around 3240 BC. Although the chambers themselves stretch back 12 metres underground from the main entrance, the barrow itself extends as a tapering turf mound, and you can walk the 100 metres along the top of the barrow. Making the way back down the hill from West Kennet Long Barrow, the next place to visit is Silbury Hill. Of all the prehistoric sites there are to see here, this one makes the least sense. Just what is it there for? Behind me here is Silbury Hill, a massive earth mound in the middle of the rolling fields. Nobody really knows what it's there for. Maybe they just had really big moles around this place. An obvious assumption would be that it is some form of grand burial mound, and many excavations as early back as the 18th century have been carried out to try and find the secrets hidden inside, only to find nothing conclusive. Roman and medieval artefacts have been found around the site, so Silbury Hill has intrigued people for a very long time. The mound is believed to have been built similar to a step pyramid, with either earth added to the sides, or the effect of natural erosion having given it a smooth, round exterior. Personally, I like to think that a massive construction project like this is just what happened when prehistoric people got really, really bored. If Stonehenge is nowadays a tourist trap that everybody goes to for seeing something prehistoric, then Avebury, by comparison, 
is a quiet hidden gem. Constructed during the Neolithic period between 2850 BC to 2200 BC, the site consists of a huge circle of standing stones surrounded by a large embankment and a ditch. Today, there are only around a third of the stone pillars that used to stand within this complex, as many of them would have been broken up before those that remained were reinstalled in the 18th century. Part of the village of Avebury is located within the perimeter, and the main road cuts straight through the centre of the circle. The Avebury stone circle is very different to the Neolithic and Megalithic sites I visited in Malta. Although they do have stone circles in Malta, they are mostly known for their temples, complete with chambers. This site in Avebury is considerably bigger though than the stone circles they have in Malta. This stone behind me here holds a very dark secret indeed, in the fact that it became someone's tomb. During an archaeological dig, a medieval skeleton was uncovered here, believed to have been either from a barber or a surgeon, based on the finds that were also recovered. It is believed that this person died as an accident, as many of these stones were moved during the medieval ages. Maybe this was an act of retribution from the pagan deities of old, to the fact that their sacred stones were being destroyed or removed during the Middle Ages. There is also a nice medieval church at Avebury, although this is located outside the earthworks, as Christian Europe was not going to have anything to do with the pagan past. Well, I guess that's a bit of a lie. Some churches were built slap bang in the middle of ancient sites, just like Knowlton Church in Dorset. Just thought it would sound a bit more dramatic saying it like that. The Long Barrows and Henges make an interesting comparison to the sites I had visited in Malta, which is another location famous for its vast array of surviving prehistoric remains. At the same time the West Kennet Long Barrow was being used as a burial chamber, the inhabitants of Malta were building huge stone temples such as those at Hagarquim, Menadstra and Jantija. Although the temples of Malta appear grander as many would have been fully enclosed stone buildings back in their day, the sites of Avebury and Stonehenge have been allocated the UNESCO World Heritage Site Honours for their historical importance. There are many other areas in the British Isles which also have a rich collection of prehistoric sites, however Wiltshire is like the prehistoric version of America's Area 51, where instead of famous UFO sightings, the land is covered with mysterious relics of distant ancestors that lived here over 5,000 years ago. If you have enjoyed this video then please consider leaving a like and following my channel for more. I'll have more historical places from the south of England, as well as many more videos to come. So until next time, see you around!